Hey people, so we've got the Lenovo ThinkPad P17 here. It's a review video. It's a little bit longer than usual, but um, we'll try to see if this format works. There's going to be chapters. Um, before we start, please do subscribe and like the channel if you enjoy the content. It's, uh, it's really uh, valuable for us to um, get that sort of feedback. Um, just to get a better sense of what can be upgraded on this system. So there's going to be some um, parts which are user upgradable and some parts which it's you can see it, but it's not usually considered user upgradable. Um, obviously, before you do this, um, disable the BIOS battery and look at the hardware service menu, etc. We're just giving you a quick idea of how it works, but please don't follow this as instruction. So under this cover, there's going to be two RAM slots um, of the four. And additionally, there's going to be two M2 slots here. And once this tiny cover has been taken off, um, you'll see one screw on the edge. And um, if you undo that screw at the same time, um, you will be able to release the keyboard on the inside, which lets you see the other two RAM slots. We'll go into this later. The more d substantial part of this disassembly would require for you to undo the captive screws on the base cover, then effectively pile over the edge of the system front to back. But do take a look at the hardware service menu and uh, we're not really fun proof anything you do. The removal of the base cover itself um, should let you see the CPU, the GPU. So that's the part which um, sometimes may be um, needed to access. Okay, um, let's get into it. So let's actually take a look inside, feeling adventures. Disable the battery in BIOS first. Obviously we've already pre-disassembled slightly. So there's going to be some captive screws. First thing that comes off is the base cover. So it shows you the M2, um, two of it, so that's um, and two additional RAM slots. What you'll notice is some captive screws here, 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 and um, one there, one there. Uh, don't forget those two, otherwise, ouch. Um, so look at the Lenovo's uh, hardware servers menu first before you do this um, at your own risk. What we've done is followed the menu and went all the way around the edge in terms of the prying. So I think it's we've already done this. So it's actually surprisingly easy. It's I think it's front, then it's back. Okay, so we'll just show you. On the inside, what you have is firstly 94 watts hour battery, smaller than the uh, battery in the P73, but really marginal difference. You can see it being connected onto the motherboard. So it's almost like a tiny preview window that this cover um, hides away. So what you otherwise see is a BIOS battery just in case you need to maintain it, quite easy access. And USB on this side seems to be a daughter board which is quite nice because you know with the USB it's much better if you can replace a USB rather than having to replace a whole motherboard, which has a big cost, especially out of warranty one day. On the other side, it's um, the 3.5 jack, the HDMI, and the other USB there on the main board, as are the other two fans. So on the right hand side, you have the GPU. So this, on the whole, you can see this is actually a removable module. So this is a um, graphic card. It's, I think, proprietary to Lenovo. So effectively, the graphic card is cooled by, you can see two heat pipes going to this bigger fan on this side. So it's actually really a beefy fan. I'd have expected a little bit more CPU cooling, but I think on this model, their calculation is probably based on the graphic card being the one that generates some heat and also some of the heat from the CPU is probably redirected to the bigger heatsink. Definitely not symmetrical in terms of the cooling capacity by the side. So effectively the two RAM slots, one and two underneath, so there's the cover, that's quite nice. There's two more under the keyboard. I think from a repairs perspective, this is just absolutely delightful because if you had to re um, replace a fan service uh, heatsink, you're not more than these number of screws away to access the system, especially a thermal face. To do more disassembling, which we're not going to do here, then you'd have to disconnect the fans. We're assuming that you disable the battery in BIOS first. 
then I think after removing these screws, then the fans may come out, exposing the CPU and the GPU. So I think that's the common um, one where people use to repaste. Otherwise, it's quite a standard design. It's um, as rotated. So just in case I miss anything. So battery connects into the motherboard. As you can see, the connector for the daughter board. Um, actually, surprisingly, the daughter board actually connects into the fan to power the fan. But yeah, so effectively the graphing module sits on top of the motherboard. So I assume once the fan is released, the graphing module, you can move it up and remove it. On this model, I think because the graphics in a way is modular, what Lenovo has the luxury of is being able to um, do wider range of specification with the same hardware. So I think with the previous P53, P73, because the graphics were built into the motherboard, that meant a little bit harder to manage the SKUs. Um, so you can see the Ethernet, everything else on the edge of the board. On the actual fans, you see the fans are really massive. In reality, it's, um, it's big, but it's not massive, as you can see probably, um, on the side. What could it be improved? I think, because you can see here, obviously, 17-inch laptop, uh, what happened? Oh, yes, this is um, effective for the P15 motherboard. So you have this much extra space. So from the newest perspective, by using the same motherboard, they can achieve, um, I think, better costs. But that also means for a 17-inch workstation, you don't necessarily have something that's truly unique to your system, other than the beefy cooling. I mean, don't get me wrong, the beefy cooling is great, we'll take it. Um, it's just, I think, when you have a 17-inch system and only have two M2, that's a little bit conspicuous. So, more or less, the spec is limited to the P15 level. So this is like a super-sized P15 with better cooling which I think in some ways um, suits what people want. But I mean, the desire is always for a more bespoke solution um, when it comes to the 17. If you pay this much, you would assume that you get something extra in addition to the um, extra cooling, which is useful. Um, but yeah, so that's, um, that's on the inside. I quite like it. It's, um, if we just put it back, um, don't watch how we put it back. Go and read the, the new hardware service menu and um, do this with care. Uh, must not do a verge. Must not do a verge. Okay, one last thing is this is not the 4G model, so you can see the sims here. It's um, yeah, on the inside you can see it's literally sealed. So it's... don't know if you have to drill through that. <laughs> and um, so... As you can see, it runs into here, but um, on there, it doesn't have that extra connector. So you need to config the 4G or be prepared to use an external um, SIMS adapter. But yeah, it's um, from my perspective, it's uh, from a repair, a bit, from upgradability and repairability perspective, I think this system is really exciting. Um, I don't know in the future if you can get cards to upgrade to um, aftermarket, but I mean, that has warranty implications, but I mean, that's exciting. Um, and I think from just day-to-day -day average person maintenance perspective, it's just so good to have everything where remove the cover and you can see it. I think I was really scared to open this cover because of the cost of this machine. If I can be honest, I didn't want to open it. But having pried it open gently, it, it's actually, it's a lot simpler than you might think, obviously disassemble at your own risk. So we're just tightening all the screws on the base cover after the removal of the cover. Um, what we'll do is we'll take a look at under the keyboard. Usually to disassemble, you would just kind of undo this, take it off, two screws to access the keyboard. Again, obviously check the hardware service menu. Don't look at it off of YouTube. I think it's just a matter of sliding the keyboard. So what you do is slide the keyboard this way and um, take it up, move it gently. Take a look at aware of the ribbon underneath. So, so what we'll do is we'll just quickly, gently. Okay, 
So you see that um, these two connectors can be released to undo the keyboard. So this is a backlight for the keyboard and that's the keys. So to access a RAM we would need to remove this. So in theory you need to disconnect those two so the keyboard is safely there. It's quite a satisfying slide. So as you can see, additional RAM. What we have here is where the 4G card will be, but as you can see, there is no antenna cable on this particular model, which is a shame. That's the Wi-Fi card, as you can see. It's um, quite a compact size. Really grateful, at least, that it's not a part of the motherboard, as you can see on some of the more modern ThinkPad. Anyway, well, just start to put it back. Thank you for watching. Um, any other comment, just drop it in the comment section.